peace, them and us. In 2063, the Earth is undergoing drastic changes due to pollution and a rapidly increasing human population. This causes the Arctic ice caps to melt, causing sea levels to rise around the world. As a result, only two continents are not underwater, but the remaining humans are fighting over the two continents for their survival. In the middle of the ocean between the two continents, there is a military outpost called the Sentinel. Inside, there are four soldiers who seem to be getting desperate because it has been more than two years since they were there but no one has come to pick them up. They were supposed to be picked up about three months ago, but until now they still haven't received any news about the war between the two continents. Because they had overstayed their allotted time, their food supplies began to run out, which forced them to fish, despite the ferocious storms that often hit the seas. Hold on. Commander Hendricks realized that a large wave was approaching, so he ordered technician banes to secure the generator, which is the heart of the Sentinel. While Baines was doing his job, he noticed that the pipes were starting to break down and leak water. He tried to repair the damage, but unfortunately he almost got stuck there. Although he eventually managed to free himself, Elsewhere, two soldiers named Sullivan and Cassidy were together trying to guard the net they were using to catch fish. However, due to the strong waves, all the fish they caught were released and washed away by the waves. Despite the horrific experience, they all managed to survive the event. Even the Sentinel, which had just been hit by a 9-meter wave, survived. <laughs> The next day, the four soldiers began to argue fiercely while finishing the remains of their meal. Bain seemed furious that Sullivan and Cassidy had failed to look after the fishing nets that could have replenished their supplies. Food once a month, all he has to do is pull up a net. I mean, is it too much to ask? You fuck my kitchen. Hearing the accusation, Sullivan became enraged and retaliated against Baines. Fortunately, Hendricks quickly broke them up. Enough. He reminded them that arguing would not solve the problem. Baines then asked why they didn't immediately call for help at headquarters. However, Hendricks explained that their telegraph could only be used to send reports, not to call for help. Our shift was over three months ago. After the situation calmed down, Sullivan went back to work making daily reports. He sent a telegram to headquarters, informing them that there was no sign of the enemy in the vicinity, just like in the previous months. Later, Sullivan met Hendricks, who was observing the situation outside. Hendricks told Sullivan to take down a hot air balloon that was moving around a lot because it was a military post. As Sullivan looked out to sea, he suddenly saw a ship passing by. Cassidy also confirmed that the ship was detected by radar. Powered contact. Small, slow, and steady. At first, Sullivan was excited because he thought it was their pickup ship. Despite his doubts, Hendricks decided to prepare for the worst. He asked to prepare weapons as they were unsure whether the ship they saw was friend or foe. Sentinel to vessel. Identify yourself. After communication attempts failed, Hendricks ordered Sullivan to investigate the ship more closely using a small boat. Alone? If I say the word, don't you hesitate. After Sullivan arrived near the ship named Aurora, Sullivan began to get confused as no one answered his calls. He decided to enter the ship. Inside the ship, Sullivan found that all the items were covered in dust. The ship's radio wasn't working at all, and there was still plenty of food left. This made Sullivan wonder what really happened there to make all the crew members disappear and leave all their belongings behind. Meanwhile, when Hendricks tried to contact Sullivan, Sullivan ignored the call because he was busy eating a snack that tasted really good. This makes Hendricks start to worry and head straight back to the control room. Inside the room, Hendricks planned to attack the ship before it reached the Sentinel. However, when he asked Cassidy for one of the cannon keys, Cassidy refused to give him the key. 
Hendrix reminded Cassidy of their protocol, which made Cassidy finally hand over the key. After Hendrix managed to switch on the cannon, he tried to contact Sullivan one last time. Luckily, Sullivan answered the call. Five. No one here. So Hendrix called off the attack and told Sullivan to take the ship to the Sentinel immediately. When Cassidy asked for the key back, Hendrix said that he would not give Cassidy the key again as punishment for Cassidy's previous disobedience to his orders. After Sullivan arrived at the Sentinel, Hendrix immediately entered the ship to check on the situation inside. Meanwhile, when Sullivan met Cassidy, it turned out that the two of them were in love. Apparently, this was the reason why Cassidy was willing to refuse Hendrix's orders. She didn't want to lose Sullivan. Later, while they were cleaning the body, they started talking about how a ship could just drift away without anyone on board. Sullivan then asked Hendrix to report this strange incident to headquarters. However, strangely, Hendrix thought this was normal. Sullivan began to feel something was wrong when he saw Hendrix carrying his two keys. After cleaning his body, Hendrix tried to check all the navigation data on the empty ship. He tried to match the data with the map they had to find out where the ship had come from and what had happened. Meanwhile, in the room, Sullivan and Cassidy are talking. Sullivan said that he had secretly sent a message to headquarters about the ship they had found. They hoped to have an answer by the next day. The next day, Hendrix was confused when he saw Sullivan, Cassidy, and Baines waiting in front of the telegraph. Unintentionally, Baines mentioned the message Sullivan had sent earlier. Hendrix thought it was stupid. However, suddenly the telegraph beeped, sending a message from headquarters. At first, they all panicked at the contents of the message. After translation, it turned out that the message they received was the one Sullivan had previously sent. This showed that all this time, all the messages they had sent had never reached headquarters. The only messages they received were the one Sullivan sent them every day. That night, while Hendrix was continuing his investigation, Bane secretly entered the ship. It seemed he was up to something, because when Sullivan asked, why did Baines leave his things, Baines simply replied that he had just gone out for some fresh air. Hey, Ben. Taking a walk? Not long after, the two of them started drinking together. There, Baines told Sullivan about his family waiting for him at home if his house was still there. Also, Baines mentioned that he might be able to repair the ship they found earlier. This made Sullivan interested in escaping from there. So, he tried to tell Cassidy about it, hoping that Cassidy would run away with them. Sullivan said that they could just go to the nearest land and start building a new life there. However, Cassidy looked confused. She even worried that Hendrix wouldn't agree to the plan. The next day, Sullivan and Bane secretly started sneaking into the ship to fix the engine. And after trying to fix it, they finally managed to start the ship. However, when they came out, Hendrix ordered them to dismantle the ship again and use the materials to repair the Sentinel. Hendrix even threatened to use weapons if they refused. No fucking way. Look, it's a working boat, Sarge. We need the parts. Seeing this situation, Cassidy tried to talk to Hendrix, hoping that he could persuade him. Meanwhile, Sullivan and Baines plan to fight Hendrix because they don't want to continue being in that place. Not long after, Hendrix and Cassidy suddenly come to meet them. Apparently, Cassidy managed to persuade Hendrix. Hendrix then proposed that two of them should go to the head office by boat to submit a report while the other two should stay at the Sentinel. Hendrix said that he would stay at the Sentinel, but it turned out that Cassidy also intended to stay. This disappointed Sullivan as he didn't expect Cassidy to want to go with him. In the room, Sullivan tried to convince Cassidy to go with him. However, Cassidy rejected him by saying that he did not love Sullivan. I don't love you, Sullivan. Hearing that, Sullivan left Cassidy. Meanwhile, Cassidy cried after seeing Sullivan leave. Before leaving, Hendrix gave Sullivan some documents and warned them to be careful of the enemy. 
When Sullivan tried to get Hendricks to go with him, Hendricks refused the invitation. Later, when Hendricks resumed his investigation, he realized that the ship had deliberately avoided the Sentinel. This made Hendricks suspect Cassidy, but in the end he decided not to believe his suspicions. The next day, everyone woke up to a sudden alarm. The alarm signaled an approaching alien ship. They immediately prepared to attack with cannons to defend the Sentinel. Bearing 186. 600. Right one, hold elevation. Sullivan then asked if they should check the ship first. However, this time Hendricks refused. They immediately fired at the ship. Unfortunately, their shots missed. When Cassidy realized that the ship was their own, he wanted to tell Sullivan and Baines. However, it was too late. Hendricks was already pointing a gun and told Baines to shoot the ship. Baines refused. He shot Baines in the ear for refusing his order. Seeing this, Sullivan was forced to fire at the ship. When Hendricks was caught off guard, Cassidy hit Hendricks on the head, knocking him unconscious. Then, they locked Hendricks in a storage room. Cassidy also took the two keys that Hendricks had always carried with him. After the incident, Baines stated that he no longer cared about the Sentinel, while Cassidy said that what he said earlier was just a lie, because he wanted to make Sullivan leave without worrying about him. Later, when Sullivan tries to give Hendricks some food, Hendricks tells him the results of his investigation. He concluded that the ship was actually planning to come to the Sentinel three months ago. However, it suddenly changed course and stopped elsewhere. After finding the ship, Hendricks suspected that someone had betrayed the ship and deliberately given it false information. Unfortunately, Sullivan didn't believe Hendricks' conclusions and decided to leave. The next day, when Sullivan tried to find Baines' whereabouts, Baines, who had been affected by the drink, suddenly began to attack Cassidy. In the end Cassidy managed to stop the attack. Cassidy then told Sullivan about the incident, but apparently Sullivan didn't know that Baines had secretly taken the key that Cassidy was carrying. The key allowed Baines to activate the generator and he planned to activate the self-destruct system. Sullivan and Cassidy then tried to persuade Baines not to do that. Eventually, Baines stopped what he was doing because he forgot the last password used to activate the generator. Baines confessed that he really wanted to kill Hendricks, but Hendricks had already escaped by jumping out of the window. Let Hendricks out. He's gone. When Sullivan tried to check on him, it turned out that the window was already open. This indicates that Hendricks deliberately jumped into the sea when Sullivan saw Hendricks' documents. He was also surprised that Hendricks had been guarding the Sentinel for so long. Hendricks apparently deliberately extended his duties. Out of curiosity, Sullivan tries to see the results of Hendricks' investigation and finds that everything Hendricks said about the ship was true. This signaled that someone among them had betrayed them. Shortly afterwards, they saw many piles of rubbish drifting not far from where they were. Cassidy plans to examine the rubbish, accompanied by Baines. Before leaving, Baines told me about his wife who was pregnant when he was assigned to the Sentinel. Until now, he didn't know whether the child was a boy or a girl. Baines then apologized for causing trouble, and Sullivan forgave him. However, since he can't trust him completely, Sullivan gives Cassidy the Hendrix gun just in case. As a precaution in case Baines had bad intentions. After the two of them left, Sullivan tried his hand at fishing. He hoped to catch some fish to supplement his food supply. Instead, he found Hendrick's dead body, which had been shot in the head. He then tried to check Baines' documents. As it turned out, Baines was just an ordinary technician, although he had a bad habit of drinking. Sullivan then checked their work schedules again. 
There, he discovered the shocking fact that when the ship that picked them up arrived, Cassidy was the one on watch from 12 p.m. to 6 a.m. Not only that, it turned out that the transmitter inside the Sentinel was detachable. This discovery suggests that Cassidy had deliberately trapped the ship that picked them up in order to kill everyone there. Later, when Cassidy arrived, he said that Baines had deliberately killed himself by jumping into a pile of rubbish. Although Sullivan knew that Cassidy was lying. However, being afraid of Cassidy, Sullivan chose to keep quiet and not expose Cassidy's lies. The next day, when Cassidy woke up, Cassidy found that Sullivan had left. When he tried to contact Sullivan, Cassidy was told that Sullivan already knew that Cassidy was a traitor. Sullivan then planned to destroy the Sentinel because he felt hopeless and didn't care about anything anymore. Cassidy then explained the reason behind his actions, but Sullivan no longer believed him. When Sullivan pressed the destroyer button attached to the radiator, it did not explode as expected. Instead, it displayed the same message that Baines had told him before. Apparently, Baines had deliberately altered the radiator's program so that it could not be used to fire the cannon or destroy the Sentinel. After the incident, Sullivan and Cassidy began to talk about themselves. In the end, they decided to survive inside the Sentinel, regardless of which side would win the war. Ha! <laughs>